All right, let's get right into this tutorial. Uh, the first thing you want to do is get your text on the on the sign the way you want it laid out. Um, I've created a fictional character here, Sally Jones, where Sally is going to be my top layer of text, and Jones is going to be the bottom layer of text. So uh, then we need to come up here to the layers and create three new layers. All right, I'm going to call them top text, bottom text, and welded text. And I'm going to turn off the visibility to all three of those and I'll leave the visibility on to layer one here. All right, then we're going to come back to our uh, sign here and we're going to so we have to spread this out on the different layers just to make it easier to work with. So let's take Sally here, highlight Sally, and take the inner border, right click it, copy to layer, top text, and we're going to come back and highlight Jones, no inner border this time, just Jones, just our bottom layer of text, right click it, and then copy that to layer, bottom text. Alright, then we're going to come up to our layers, and we're going to make the top text layer visible and then turn off the visibility to layer one. And one thing we got to do here is also do here is uh, make the uh, top text layer active by clicking that little icon. If you don't do that, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Uh, so just remember not only to make it visible, but make it active. All right, so now we're in our top text layer. We need to highlight Sally. Well, first of all, Sally is, it's a font right now. If I click on my text box over here, You'll see that it's an AliExpress font. I can edit it, whatever. It's in font format. That's not going to work for what we need to do here. We need to make Sally regular vectors and then group them together. So highlight Sally or highlight your top layer of text, whatever that is. In my case, it's Sally. Right click it, convert to curves. All right. Then. A lot of these scripted fonts have these overlapping vectors and it. just take your cut tool and and uh, clean those up and then uh, when you're done with that we'll have nice you know nice clean vectors to work with so now at this point we want to highlight all of Sally here and uh, the inner border right click it we're going to copy that to layer welded text. All right, now we want to go to layer welded text by turning off the visibility to the top text layer and turning on the visibility of the welded text layer and make it active. All right, and now uh, highlight all of the, uh, the text here, in my case, Sally. Come over here to your offset tool and we're going to offset it outwards. 0 0.058 and delete original. Now I'm going to, at the end of the video, I'll, I'll show you how I got to this number 0 0.058. It might be different for what you're doing, for the bits that you're using, the depths that you're doing, all that kind of stuff. In this case, we're going to use 0 0.058 and offset it. All right, uh, now we want to highlight the inner border, come back to the offset tool. This time we're going to offset it inwards, same amount, and delete the original, and then offset that. All right, and the last thing we need to do here is highlight all of our text, all of the vectors of the text, right click it, and group the objects. All right, now come back up here to layers, and we're going to go to the bottom text layer now. We're going to turn off the visibility of the welded text layer, and we're going to make bottom text visible and active. All right, highlight uh, your bottom text. Again, this is a font. We, we can't work with fonts. we got to convert it to curves. So right-click it, convert it to curves, right-click it again, and group objects. All right, now highlight it, right-click it again, copy to layer, welded text. All right, we're almost done here. So we're going to go back to welded text. So turn off the visibility to bottom text. On, uh, turn on the welded text and make it active. Now what we should have here is two groups of, of letters. We have Sally here grouped together. 
and we have Jones here grouped together. That's exactly what we want. So highlight both groups and come over here to the weld tool. It's this little icon here. Click it once. You see that it uh, got rid of all the uh, overlapping vectors there. It kind of looks like a mess, but it's going to work out. All right, now that's all you have to do with the vectors. Now we have to start carving the sign. So come back up here to layers and go to your top text layer, make it active, and turn off the visibility to welded text. All right, so we're going to highlight everything here, the inner border and our text. Then we're going to come over here to our, our tool paths and select the V-carve tool path. Uh, no start depth on this one. We're going to do a flat depth of 0.1. Uh, we're going to select a 60 degree V bit and let's use a flat uh, a clearance tool a quarter inch end mill for that uh, you can do whatever you want here whatever your normal uh, course of action is there and then calculate close that out and now we're gonna go back to that welded text layer so let's turn off the visibility of top text and turn on the visibility of welded text and make it active now we're gonna select everything here inner border and the, the welded text open up a new vcarve toolpath this time we're gonna set the uh, start depth at point one uh, that's your start depth is whatever depth you started with on the last toolpath. So the flat depth on the last toolpath was 0.1, so that's where we need to start this one. So we're going to start it at 0.1. All the other settings should be uh, the same. It's the 60 degree V bit, uh, the quarter inch end mill, and whatever you did here. And calculate it. And that's it. If we go to our uh, preview toolpaths here and preview them all. You'll see that we have a stacked uh, text sign here, and it's V-carved. I notice a lot of the tutorials out there, there's some of them anyway, show you uh, straight carve, you know, just, just carve it with uh, an end mill. I like to V-carve most of my signs, if not all of my signs. So this is, uh, this is how you do it with a V-carve. All right, so that's the tutorial. Let me show you how I got that offset number. Uh, let me go back to uh, layer one here. Um, here's a little drawing I did in a CAD program. Uh, you can do this in the Vectric, you know, Aspire, VCarve, whatever you're using. It's, I think their drawing tools are a little wonky, so I like to use, uh, you know, AutoCAD or something like that. And this represents a, a V-bit, 60-degree V-bit. So these two lines are 60 degrees to each other. So what we're trying to figure out is what the distance is from the center line of the bit to the edge of the bit at a certain depth, whatever depth you want to carve your first layer there. So our first layer depth was 0.1. So the offset at that point at 0.1 is 0 0.058. That's where when we were doing our offsets over here, that was the number we were putting in there. So let's say you, you want to carve your first uh, depth to an eighth of an inch, 0.125. You would need to figure out, you know, at that depth, what the offset would be. It would be a little bit bigger. So like I said, you can do that in a CAD program. You can do it in, in whatever program you're, you're working in here, your Aspire, or V-Carve, or Cut2D. Or you can go online and use one of these calculators. Basically, you have to kind of use your imagination here. This is like a half of a bit laid sideways. So this, this would be the point of the bit. And if the whole bit was there, it would be, you know, this side here. So this is half of the bit. We're trying to find out the offset at a certain depth. So that would, we're trying to find out what A is, lowercase a. What do we know? We know the angle... It's a 60 degree bit, so half of 60 would be 30. And we know the depth of our cut, which is the lowercase b here. So in, in my case, it was 0.1. And that's all we know. So that's all you need. So you calculate it. And we're looking for the lowercase a, this edge a up here. 
So there it is, 0 0.0577, so I rounded off to 0 0.058. Now, if you were, like I said, if you were going to do uh, an eighth of an inch depth, you would just, you know, do it that way in a 30 uh, degree angle here, calculate it, and that'd be 0 0.072. That would be your offset number. So that's a real easy way to, to get to that... Uh, offset number. So uh, the other thing is I'm going to write these directions all down in a, in a printed out tutorial. I will put that tutorial in the, uh, the notes right below this video so you can uh, use it. You can follow along with the notes or you can just use them in the future. And I'll put timestamps on uh, each in instructions on where you have to go in this video. If something doesn't make sense in the written instructions, you can come back to this video and zoom it right to that timestamp and uh, it should help you out. So that's it. That's it for this tutorial. Um, get out there and break some bits.